Hello, how are we all? I wasn't sure whether I should leave the apartment or not today, but I decided not to. Well, actually, I didn't decide. I just couldn't because I'm so tired <laughs> physically. <laughs> Apparently, walking in the rain and in the wind can do that to you. And I've been sneezing all day, which means that I'm probably going to catch a cold by the end of this <sighs> weekend. <sighs> how are you all? So yesterday was uh, are you okay day in Australia which means like you know you can go around to people and asking are you okay which means here it's just helping raise awareness for mental health and well-being and everything so I thought I would ask you too are you okay I feel like it's such a loaded question in this day and age because I feel like not a lot of us are okay. Most of us are either burnt out, um, have chronically, and chronically ill, neurodivergent. Um, even if you're none of those, you are basically probably if you're like me at around 40 years old, you're probably are the sandwich generations. If you still have parents, you're probably going to be taking care of your elderly parents. And if you have children, you're probably doing both, taking care of your children and also taking care of your parents. If you're a woman, you probably have double that. You're probably taking care of your husbands, your husband and family, which is your, probably your parents-in-law. And all of that thing. So there are just so many things happening. And I don't feel like the question, are you okay, is even justifying the amount of pressure that we are living in. Uh, and that's even without any kind of financial pressure, without any kind of, um, you know, um, trauma attached to it. That's even hard. Uh, but I guess that's life. Um, anyway, if you guys are new here, welcome to the channel. I really appreciate you guys subscribing. We are about 90 people away from 2,000 subscribers can you believe it earlier this year we were like trying to, I was trying so hard to get to a thousand subscribers even when I got to the thousand subscribers I didn't really think I was gonna hit 4,000 4, watch hours but we kind of did it by May I think um, yeah so I, by May or by June so it was it has only been like three four months ago but i felt like forever ago um and now like the year is speeding up to the end to december um so if you guys don't know and if you guys are new videos right now the schedule so far up to september from early january is five days a week which is weekdays monday to friday sydney time sydney australia time and we, I'm doing it so that I'm just considering it as a job for now. Um, if you don't know, I'm a creative, which means that I, my income is not fixed. I get money from YouTube um, and I get money from um, print on demand, like society6.com slash Valerie. Or if you want to get my merch, um, go to ValerieArt.com. Sorry, ValerieArtRedBubble.com or like there is a link in the description below. And also from my graphic work which is, um, you know, where people buy graphic stock or photo stocks um, like, you know, in Getty Image or Adobe or Canva, you know. So I am predominantly um, don't have any fixed income whatsoever. I'm just relying on whether I have a good sales month or not a good sales month to be able to buy food sometimes um, so that's what I do um, that's my day job outside YouTube uh, all my links are below um, so you can check it out yourself what my works are if you want to help out so that would be great if you go and um, get something fancy for your walls <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean that to be a plug but anyway moving on um, so this video series are basically just me exploring 
uh, my 40th year and how it would unfold. unfold. So far uh, it has been um, lackluster probably for other people watching. For people watching it's probably lackluster because I feel like my don't have my life don't have a lot of ups and down emotionally there's a lot of ups and downs but in reality like in the reality in the real world sense there is not much changes um, so it's just quite routine me going to grocery shop me just cooking eating and just doing my mundane boring life and I don't really see any kind of change until the end of the year and next year is a different story. I have no idea what I'll be doing, um, stuff like that, or whether I'll be still doing five days a week vlogging. It takes a lot of energy and mental energy as well. And I feel like producing creative outputs every day, not only on a video form, but also on a you know digital form um, outside a video actually very draining because I have to constantly think about what should I make, how should I make it today, and what do I need to do, what do I need to say, um, and it's comforting in a lot of ways because you focus on today and today only and if today sucks and you get a really bad reception on your videos or if you are too delirious basically that day to function and you just write whatever you need to write to get the video out basically and then you realize whatever you wrote the lot um, yesterday basically provoke people and then you woke up the next day and then it will be filled with lots of comments that you don't really know how to reply to that's a bit a bad day or bad week but 90% of the time it's just boring which I feel like very comforting as well. Of course, like in private, I also have like, you know, um, a dilemma about that because there is comfort in routines and mundane and boringness. But I also know if I'm craving for excitement that comes with a double-edged sword because excitement can mean disaster. Um, excitement can mean people are acting out of the ordinary and I don't really want to deal with that because I feel like my energy is limited enough to deal just with the boring stuff it's hard enough so I don't know how to deal with anything that is out of the ordinary that is surprising take a tea break this is cold tea by the way And I don't particularly have any topic to talk about today. So I am a bit like a duck out of water. What should we talk about? <laughs> I know I should be doing live, but I don't think I have the attention span to do live stream anymore. Especially because with live stream, you have to be on your feet all the time because, you know, with chats and people chatting and sometimes people are trolling. I feel as my nervous system heals, I am becoming a lot more sensitive and in the past I could take a lot of uh, negative feedback but nowadays I'm unable to. I can't tolerate negative feedback anymore. This feels like when I was younger, when I was like in my early 20s, I was watching a lot of Criminal Minds, you know, the TV shows about um, a profiler, FBI's a team that hunt uh, serial killers, serial rapists, serial murderers. I used to play that for uh, so that I can go to sleep. So I just put them on loop. You know, I um, we used to have DVDs, um, meaning like that disc that you put inside a machine, and then you have to press play, and then you can press loop. Everything is on our phone these days, but. I'm 40 years old, we used to play DVDs, um, and 
I know like probably someone's older than me like 50 years old 60 years old like well we used to be we used to have beeper and pager when we were kids okay you know <laughs> there's always gonna be someone's older than us and then say oh we used to just listen to the radio before TV was a thing um but yeah, but I really like that kind of videos before, like murders, get, you know, um, and it's so gruesome. And and then I realized a few years back, I can't deal with it anymore. Like my nervous system used to be soothed by these type of shows, by these gores, by this violence, basically, um, by this repetitive intense music that they have on it used to soothe me to sleep uh, but a few years back I noticed that it made me really anxious my nervous system can't handle that anymore and my nervous system really can't tolerate the violence and it made me when my stomach felt sick and my nervous system felt out of whack so I stopped watching all of those things and slowly I started avoiding any kind of violence and any kind of even small stuff you know when people are being passive aggressive and people being sarcastic towards you i used to be extremely sarcastic and i realized like as soon um the more my nervous system heals the more i am not tolerant anymore for any kind of violence and it's i'm not sure is it a waste I feel like tolerating violence in this type of, in this kind of um, atmosphere of hardship could be an asset. Have I lost that asset? Uh, am I not resilient anymore? That's what I feel that sometimes. I feel like I have lost my resilience. Or maybe resilience is just a word that people throw around when they don't want to carry the weight of taking care of another person that they should have um, because it's an annoyance. It's a burden towards them. But is it really a burden if you're the one that were the, the perpetrators that created all the victims that you actually need to take care of? The questions to panda. <laughs> to be honest, I've tried to record this for like four or five times before this. I was on my couch and I was just like, let's just do it from my couch. Apparently, my body is like, if you're not standing up, you're not working, girl. So you better get up and do this standing up. So I am standing up. <laughs> uh, I feel like being 40 and... I still feel like I'm a teenager. If I get pregnant right now, I would freak out. I would feel still like a teenager because first, I don't have a support system. I don't have family members. I don't have um, financial backings whatsoever. So I don't have anyone to help me out. And I know like a lot of women are in that position for sure, but they probably have friends that would like to help them. I don't because I definitely recognize when I say help I don't mean like a temporary three weeks type of help so that I can stand on my feet I'm unable to stand on my feet basically I realize like I am apparently incapable of that um, and I don't know if I am going to be capable anymore and I feel like I definitely fall onto that stereotype of you know gifted kid to chronically ill, disabled, um, pipeline adult. <laughs> and I'm not blaming anyone, I suppose. I feel like there are so many things that I didn't know and I didn't have any guidance growing up. And that make it very difficult. And I realized like um, having proper adults who are aware what their duties are, what their responsibilities are beyond providing um, financial support, which is extremely important and very necessary and probably about 80% of the, you know, the weight of being an adult supporting your children. Um, so I'm not, you know, 
making that as a small thing whatsoever. But also on top of that, being a presence and actually showing guidance and、um, being a model for kids are actually quite important. So I, am, I feel like now I've been robbed of that, of proper adults. Um, being guided. I felt like if I were a kid, I think that was probably going to be the most important part of transitioning from a child to an adult, which I never had. So I guess I would be just stuck here. <laughs> I'm not blaming people, by the way. I'm, I'm just saying that that's just happened how I lived my life in a lot of ways. And now being aware of the That fact and being 40, meaning like, oh, you know, I should have that's great, though, you know, you should have、uh, the chance now to rectify that because you're no longer a child, so you have choices and you have power to shape the life that you want for the next few decades or so. I feel like I don't, I can't. <laughs> Is that an excuse? For sure. I'm pretty sure that is definitely an excuse. But I just don't feel like I have the strength. I don't even, I can't even go outside for an hour or two every day and come back and not feel tired. Imagine having to work. And I know everyone else d o it. I'm just saying that it's hard for me to do it, which is why I am. Do it. I'm trying to do it my way, the best way possible, right now, which is being you know, doing creative work because it's basically being judged by the work itself and not whether how much time you put into it, you know, how much effort you put into it, you know, how much hours did you put into it, as long as the work is liked. Or the, as long as the work, like for other works, as long as people buy it, I'll get money. Even if I put two hours or three hours or ten hours, it, the, the same amount of money coming in will be the same because it's being sold at the same price, like for each piece of artworks, for example, or graphic work. So it's like I have to use leverage to be able to make money the best way I can. The, the only way I know how far I know. And, like, you know, this YouTube channel, like, I'm making one video, but、uh, if I get 300 views, there's been 300 eyeballs, or on, no, 600 eyeballs. Because if 300 people times two, 600, that's how you know. Of course, unless you only have one eyeball, that's okay too. We don't discriminate.、Um, So、uh, the, I think that's what I'm talking about being leverage. Like, if I sell my art stuff on society6.com slash Valerine, one art print can be like I can make one art work, for example, I can make one painting, and then one painting can be sold, I don't know, like infinite amount of times. So, you know, if five people buy s it,、um, that means I get five sales out of it, out of one work that I did. Of course, like the downside is, of course,、um, <laughs> Um, it's just like any other business. Sometimes you get zero sales, sometimes you get 100 sales. And I know it's a very feast and famine lifestyle, which I particularly don't like. I really want stability and I really want predictability and I want steadiness. I want something that is,、um, you know, consistent. But at the same time, I also definitely acknowledge I am unable, well, I don't know. like, Working nine to five is definitely hard, and it's you can get fired at any time. I, I was watching a video, and then this video, one of the commenters was saying, In one's adult life, you probably get about four or five times of being made redundant, and that's pretty normal. And if I had known that particular knowledge back when I was in my 20s, I would not have given up easily, probably, because I think by the time I was 28 or something, I think I would have,、um, like, businesses that I was working for had gone belly up 
couple of times, a few times, maybe two or three times. So I was let go because the business was shutting down because it wasn't having any more money. The sales went down and stuff. Um, so I, even back then, even when I was young, I was already experiencing the tr the the reality of things. You know, like just because you're working for someone doesn't mean that that business that you're working for will always be there. Getting a real job has no meaning whatsoever because a real job just means that someone else, that is someone else's business and then that means that, that, that someone else, the one that owns the business, need to find sales as well so that they can keep paying you. So it's the same like what I'm doing. I'm just doing it at a micro, a micro, micro scale. Um, I need to keep finding sales and market my products so that I can buy food and keep going. I don't know if this conversation so far is interesting. Maybe because I'm just blabbering so that I can fill up time and the air time that I'm doing right now. And I'm not really sure whether this is useful or not. But I am running out of time. It is almost sunset soon. <laughs> and I haven't done anything today. Because I am too fatigued and too tired. Welcome to the chronically ill world of Valerie. <laughs> because I forgot that I have been fueling myself with caffeine. Well, very small dose of caffeine, like micro dosing. And it's not even... It's hojicha. Hojicha is supposed to have only like 7 milligram of um, caffeine, like decaf coffee has about 30 milligrams, so it's quite small, but I have a very hypersensitive body, so oh, even small caffeine will make me feel buzzing, it makes me buzz a lot. But y'all. Are you okay? I hope you guys are okay. I feel like being alive is really hard. <laughs> it's just really hard. Also, I watched this video the other day on YouTube. Um, this lady was saying to her viewers, um, basically saying, stop saying to people that are feeling sad or depressed or going through some things um, to be, to, to, to say to them, it could be worse. Some other people have it worse than you. Cheer up or being told to be grateful for what you have when you're feeling down. And the way he, she presents this video is in a very calm, monotone and, you know, um, soothing voice. But with a flat effect, meaning like with a non... Um, expression there's no expression on her face so she was just saying it like that like if you tell people to be grateful when they're feeling very down and going through depression you're not really helping them like uh, that's not what she actually said but that's how she said it and I was like you go girl <laughs> I was like suddenly passionate about it <laughs> I was like yeah <laughs> Because I think it's quite, I think what she said also really rings true for me because it feels, it, she's saying like, that just means like you guys are invalidating my feelings and you are invalidating what I'm going through and you are putting me down because of it. And I'm like, that's actually true, right? Like, um, and I think, and then at the same time, I can understand like what, the other person is saying like when they say I'll just be grateful for what you have because I feel like I've gone through that many many times especially now like you know because I've been going to my social clubs 
to meeting the ladies. They're all great and stuff like that. But like we are very in different positions in life. Like uh, we have different problems. Like they are mostly financially settled and established because you know they are about 40, 30 years older than me. And so they're boomers generation. So they have you know that time and also the economic e economy prosperities behind them. And and you know to back them up and all the world basically supported them throughout their life financially um, and I feel like when they complain to me about certain things in my head I feel like uh, at least you don't have to consider you know where your next meal is gonna come from at least you don't have to consider where you're gonna live yeah, you probably, like, they're considering different things now. It's like, oh, what about if I die without dignity? What about if I have con incontinence, you know? Um, you know, that means, like, when you can't control your bladder and your, um, you poop, basically, you just blah, everywhere. You're like a child again, you know, you don't have control over your bowel movement and stuff like that. So they're thinking about their dignity as they're dying and stuff. And I'm thinking, and I know this sounds horrible, I understand, but I'm thinking, well, if you have money, you can just pay for someone to do it. And you also have your families, you have your children, you can, if you don't want to, for strangers to see it, you can ask your family members to do it. Yeah, it's embarrassing, for sure. But you have people and you have resources. Like if that happens to me, I'll just die in my filth on the street probably so um, I felt quite <laughs> uh, I felt like you know in my head of course I didn't tell them that of course I sympathize with them like oh yeah it must be really horrible it must be you know not the best way to go because you do want to keep your dignity intact with all these people like you know when you talk to them because they are having a lot of health issues like and I can sympathize with that because I'm having health issues and I'm more only 40 years old and I'm incapable of actually going out there and be my full potential by you know grinding it out and making it happen in, out in the world um, I had you know I was hit by uh, rain yesterday and the wind and today I'm unable to leave the apartment because I'm too fatigued <sighs> and to do this talk right now recording took me about four or five hours to gather energy and to actually do it so it's it's a lot you know it's a lot of before and after tax energy wise mentally emotionally so to be able to do this one hour or how many hours half an hour or whatever amount this video is going to be it takes like five eight hours of trying to get yourself here and then after this is over it will take me another eight hours to recover plus the weekend so that I can start over again on, on Monday and and that just so too I, get, I can appear normal for that brief period that I'm on camera that I can have the energy to do that um, so I feel like having health in your in your in your youth is very important having energy mentally capable of thinking and emotional clarity and um, maturity to deal with people is also definitely an asset having friends and families supporting you I feel like they talking about you know when they fell off and then they have to call an ambulance to get them um, you know places and because and then they have to wait for their children to come or their relative to come and basically help them in you know with all the associated uh, administration attached to when they fall over and then they have to go to the hospital ambulance are called you know usually their support network come in and then help them either their neighbors or their families you know the in-laws or like you know people and I then I'm like I remember when I had a fall <laughs> and it was blood and I didn't have money to buy food so there isn't and and haven't eaten for like maybe I don't know a year or so by that time 
and I didn't have anyone to call and I just have to basically pick myself up um, make sure that I got to the you know to my bed and then make sure that I'm still alive I'm like okay and then you know having I realized like you know my I still have the scar here my my chin split up and it was like hanging I felt like I had two mouths talking to me on the thing and then I couldn't I couldn't go out there and call an ambulance that would cost me four hundred five hundred dollars to call an ambulance to get me to a hospital I can't go to the um, medical center because I didn't have the energy to do it I was starving so I was lucky because I had these surgical stripes from surgeries that I did like that I had taken a few years back and I just used that to tape on my chins to cover up the scars and it was good enough um, so I didn't see the doctor by any means I actually had to get up and um, uh, maybe an hour later to clean up the the blood that was splat on the floor and I have to like you know wash this chin like this the, the um the scar and also the um, the site of injury so that it's clean so that it doesn't get infected by any means and after that I just went back to my bed because out my head was already spinning and I didn't have any kind of energy to stand up like this um, yeah so I'm always like thinking uh, well like you know I was thinking like those people that are saying to this lady you should be grateful for what you have <laughs> so I'm definitely like thinking like oh to these elderly ladies rather than feeling pity I thought well you should be grateful you have your families and you have your money to get it so that you can pay for your private health insurance so you can you know just call the ambulance to get you where you need to go um, in my head that was like the voice like there's two voices of course they both are real the voices are oh that must be really hard it's also real the other voice is like oh you know you have to be grateful for what you have you have it better than me like I didn't have anyone to call I just suffered my way through it um, they both are real but and I think like as a society we probably just don't want to associate with this voice much because I feel like that's just a very negative and probably felt a bit uh, aggressive because you are it does feel like you're attacking someone when you do that and I don't think many people will take that kindly <laughs> so yeah, the weird part is that the people who usually say that out loud are the people who are not able to receive it back so it's always interesting if you see those people and you meet those people and you confront them. Doesn't happen always, but you know, sometimes. We I have been talking for 30 minutes. I'm not sure if this is a good... I'm tired. <laughs> My battery just died. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if this is a good video or not, but this is the best I can do today. I feel like we are all like a zombie these days, or like a robot. Like in the morning, you go like, plug in the robot, they wake up, eat breakfast, go to the office. If you still, if you don't have any remote job, if you have remote jobs, you wake up, you turn on the computer. <laughs> and then after that, you're just trying to either manage your energy so that you can do it over again tomorrow, or you just dissociate from your body so that you don't yourself. Life is hard. And if someone says, oh, it's probably easier than people who are remote and don't have anything in the jungle out there or in Africa where people starve to death. Yeah, probably. But at the same time, I feel like 
this is a different kind of hard. I think you, wherever you are, is always going to be harder than when you were before. Because I think that's the challenge of life. Because where you are right now is where you need to be, and where you need to be is where the biggest hurdle is at that moment. So it's natural where where you are is your is your hardest point, usually. I feel like I should snacks. <laughs> I should. Ooh. Ooh. The vlog yesterday was getting longer, so I actually ended up going to Kohl's and I got a carton of eggs. How good is that? A carton of eggs. It's empty everywhere. There was no eggs at Woolies or in Aldi's. I was so surprised. I watch too many TikTok videos. I'm absorbing their characters now. <laughs> I still have my double chin. Shall we get some sun? I feel like we should get some sun. Should we talk outside so that I can have some sunshine today and fresh air? It's probably a bit noisier than outside. It's okay, let's go outside. That's my balcony, I mean not outside. Okay, I'm outside. I feel like I'm a prisoner with a mugshot right now. Um, oh no. It's <laughs> the sun is too bright on my face. It's like it's just right there. <laughs> uh, what was I talking about? I can't even remember what I was talking about. But yeah, so if you're feeling you're having a hardship right now, that because it's you you do have a hardship, and I think even comparing yourself to other people is not a good idea. Because I'm fully aware that my position right now, maybe for other people, it feels like very non-problematic and there is probably a sense that I'm making the problems myself up and it's not a real problem and it should have been taken care of like easily. So I definitely understand if you have problems and other people say that it's not a big problem. Um, and it's just like like this sage, right? You are forever being misunderstood. And I think like that's quite common. And so if you think that your life is hard, um, I believe you. Even when I don't want to agree with you, I probably have to believe you because I think that's one of the challenges, isn't it? One of the challenges is to see the problem as not a big deal. And once it transformed from a big deal to a not a big deal in your head, then that's when it stopped being a problem. Because eventually, at the end of the day, I think until you get that message, until you get that you can solve the issues in your head, it will still be a problem, even if it's not a problem for other people. Also, am I? If my my situation got bad again, because I'm seeing the swimmers in my eyes a lot more than before. Like you know, if you see floaties um, inside your eyeball when you see outside, they say that it's because you have high blood sugar. Maybe I don't know if that's to be believed or not. Anyway. Yeah, life is hard and we just have to keep going. Um, on TikTok recently, I've seen people... Oh no, on Instagram, I saw this comic because I followed a lot of illustrators on, on my, you know, Instagram.com slash Valerine. So all my stuff is on Valerine. So, um, and... 
this artist, like in the in her in her comic, was saying, like a few years back, that she had a psychotic uh, attack, and then from taking, I think from taking Xanax or Prozac, like uh, one of those antidepressant medication, and she went into a psychotic break, and she tried to take her life. And in that episode where she was trying to take her life, she said that a very clear voice um, was telling her, "You have to live." And she took it seriously, and she basically so sob- that sobered her up, and she decided, "Okay, yes, of course, why not? <laughs> like, why am I doing this?" And I think she after that she figured out like it was caused by one of the medication that she was taking. Which was, I think, pretty serious. I mean, like, if you are taking an anti an antipsychotic drug that actually makes you go into a psychotic, into a psychosis, that's something that someone should talk about. <laughs> I think, mean, like, you know, you should really be careful with the side effect. Maybe people should talk more about that rather than worrying what the side effect of taking too much vitamin D three, for example. Or taking too much antibiotics, which I think is quite b- bad. I'm grateful for our modern technology, for sure, and our modern medicine. Something that I'm definitely am in, you know, able to take care of myself with. But at the same time, we can't just take it blindly. We have to have our critical thinking intact as well. Because at the end of the day, it is our body, and I think like I am where I am now because I was just too fuss pleasing other people and trying to be a good student, trying to be a good employee, trying to be a good human being. That I forgot that people are people. At the end of the day, they will backstab you. <laughs> They will only take care of their own kin, and unless you are one of their kin, even if you are one of their kin, people can k i n so kin like kinship. So they still can backstab you. So I feel like you just have to take care of yourself a lot more. You have to make sure that you check in with yourself. Make sure that you have enough energy, enough mental well-being, enough finances in the bank, enough money. I mean, um, enough people to support you when you know something falters. For example, um, recently f- um, bumped into someone that I haven't seen in years. Um, it does feel like yesterday, though. It doesn't feel like it has been years. Maybe because. It's still within the last decade, so I feel like it's still recent. Um, I can't wait till the day I die. Oh, that'll be great. Anyway, that's a distraction. Um, and they were saying about how one of the family members that they had were like died, and they were about like almost two decades younger than them, and they have to console the spouse for the past three years now. Um, and even when they're doing this, they're basically also bitching about them. Like, oh my god, it takes so much effort and time to basically keep talking to them for the past three years. But I have to because otherwise, you know, they are so withdrawal. They are just so not wanting to get back to society again. They're just isolating themselves. You know, they're basically grieving very hard because it has been a spouse for decades. So I think, like for me, it sounds very normal. But even when he's, well, even when they're bitching about it, I, you can tell that they actually put an effort to make sure like their family members are okay and talking to them, even though it becomes a like such a chores for them, they still do it to make sure that they are okay. And that's the power of um, having support network. Even if they bitch about it, they still do it, and they make sure that you are okay, and make sure that you don't do anything stupid just because some um, 
usual like another life event happen to you so having support networks is such a also asset it also carries a lot of weight it carries a lot of um, it carries a lot of value and like it it's it, uh, uh, like it wasn't until like I hear all these things now I realize like how deprived I am I realize like where I am in my position in life not having any connection not having any support networks not having any kind of um, familial backing not having any kind of financial backing not even having like mental energy physical energy and all of that things actually set me back a lot a lot a lot and I realized like I think even though the position I am in definitely could be better and blah 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 I feel like I because of this I stopped beating myself up I'm like well this is not my fault like it's not entirely my fault this is I'm just unlucky for right now and maybe my luck will turn maybe it won't but it's not 100% my fault and I'm doing my best we are all doing our best with what's being given to us and we'll just take it one step at a time and see where it goes and see where it will lead us hopefully to a painful death <laughs> Sorry, a painless death. Oh, is that a Freudian slip right there? Um, also, if you guys are new to this channel, I have a black humor comedy type of tone, so don't be alarmed. It's just for fun. That's how we deal with our traumas <laughs> and that's how we keep on living by making it into somehow tolerable and funny in our mind so we don't actually do what we say in the videos um I've been blabbing for like 47 minutes right now and probably very I don't know how it is for you guys. This is just me blabbing, I guess. I'm just yapping. I am yapping, yapping, yapping. Um. But yeah, I do hope that you guys are okay. I do hope that you guys don't blame yourself too much. But if you're one the type of person who have been blaming other people well for your whole life, but maybe it's time to look at yourself. So, you know, I think this is only dedicated for people who always take the blame for other people, people who are keenly um, over people pleasing, people who are continuously trying to make everyone happy and discarding themselves and abandoning themselves being overly upset if you're not doing something perfectly for this is for those people for people who think that everything is their fault when in reality it's just circumstances cornering you into a bad spot and people may be taking advantage of you so you know it's not entirely your fault it's okay it's okay it's okay let's just take it one day at a time If you guys don't want any kind of talk like this, <laughs> just like every Thursday or like in any of the other videos, just write the comments of like what you want me to talk about. Not about myself, but maybe we can talk about a, co a topic or something, you know, just a topic out there that we can discuss together, I suppose. And I will just give you my thoughts in a video and everyone else can contribute in the comments. You know, just making it like a day where we can just think about it's like <laughs> I guess it's like an essay this is a topic that you should write about 
Because <laughs> I'm pretty bad at talking about myself, actually. Uh, the other day, a week ago, two weeks ago, I think, um, I was making my um, headband in one of the craft group that I was in. And then suddenly, the all the attention of the ladies turned to me. And I'm like... Oh my god, I'm not ready for this attention and I got really really like flustered and the other lady was commenting because like they wanted to take my headband putting it into the you know the group chat and I'm like no 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 I was panicking a little bit when all the attention are on me and I'm like oh okay this is bad I probably need to take attention in real life like how to handle it and stuff but I'm not sure it's like when everyone's their attention is on me like when the group attention is on me I'm like oh I don't know what to do with this it's like panic I probably need to work on that um, yeah Hopefully you guys have a good weekend and this is the last video for this um, week and I um, will see you guys in the next video on Monday. Have a good weekend everyone and <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video because this is just me yapping for a whole like 50 minutes. Love you. Bye all. <laughs>